When it comes to using your GoPro or action camera, what is your favorite mount? The standard, straightforward helmet mount. There is also the side of the helmet mount, which makes for a really cool angle. I've currently snapped mine off. I'm waiting for new uh, brackets to come. Then you have one of the favorites in BMX, the chest mount. So that's what I like to call the classic GoPro mounts. The chest mount, the helmet mount, what most of us use on the daily when we go riding. But sometimes, to get that extra cool angle, you gotta think outside the box. And yeah, I made a BMX peg GoPro mount on my basket pegs, the pegs that I actually make. And there's two different ways of doing this. The actual GoPro mount there, that little bracket to fix the camera on, you can buy that on eBay for a fiver. And it's actually a bracket that goes on top of the actual stem on your mountain bike. It won't fit on the BMX because obviously the BMX forks are threaded. It goes on the mountain bike forks, unless you've got an old school BMX. And then the actual cap will fit on there. So to get the GoPro mount to fit to your pegs, simple as this. You either drill a six mil hole through the end of the peg, so you can actually put the bolt through and do the nut up underneath, or you actually drill and tap it M6. So you drill a hole five mil, then you tap it, M6. So as simple as, get yourself a hand drill, or if you've got access to a pillar drill, even better. Drill a hole, tap it, either by hand, or unless you've got an actual a mill. And yeah, it's as simple as that. The little mount you actually get on eBay for a fiver, you then screw it straight on. And this might sound stupid, but you obviously gotta attach the peg to your bike first and then put the mount on. Otherwise you won't get your socket through because the actual end of the bolt will stick through. I'm not trying to say any of you are stupid, but you probably will find you might do it. Yeah, you can see, look, I've done this one by a nut. Well, it's actually drilled and tapped and I've put a nut on. So the thing is so sturdy, it's not going anywhere. So you put a nut on the inside, hold a 10 mil spanner on there, five mil Allen key through the top, clamp it right up and you're away to go. So quick disclaimer, if you're gonna do this, do it on a set of pegs that you don't really care about because obviously you're gonna drill a hole through the pegs. If you're gonna use plastic pegs, 
you're best off drilling the six mil hole straight through and bolting it rather than trying to tap it because the tap won't hold very well, the thread won't hold very well in plastic. And in most cases, for an M6 bolt, five mil Allen key for the top, and the nut that goes with it is normally 10 mil. So you need a 10 mil spanner. Then you'll be away. But the footage you can get is really, really cool. I think. Some people might think it's shit, but I think it's really cool. And one other thing I would say, depending on what peg, you're gonna put it on front or back. Try not to land too hard on the peg which the GoPro's on. Because in most cases, if I've got it on the back peg, I tend to sort of land harder on the front peg. I either do Smiths if it's on the back peg, so it's actually you don't even grind the back peg. And if you've got it on the front, I'd rather stick to ice picks and feebles and stuff. The real cool thing of it, having it on the back peg, you can kind of actually see when you're in manual, if that makes sense. Normally when you've got a chest cam and you do a sort of a run and you're in manual, you can't really see that you're in manual. But when you've got it on the back peg, you can see you're in manual. So all the footage I'm just about to show you now is GoPro footage when the GoPro is mounted to the front peg. And now I'm going to show you footage when the GoPro is mounted to the rear peg. The only difference, the main difference when it's mounted to the rear peg, it will pick up the cassette noise. So if you sort of run a free coaster, you get laughing because it's quiet.
you gotta keep this shit safe, do you know what I mean? So that was a perfect example of what not to do. Do not grind on the peg in which the GoPro is mounted. But don't grind too hard. I ground way too hard, the vibration actually broke. The little housing that I had it in, you can see it's actually snapped the piece off and the GoPro went flying out. The GoPro is unscathed, but that was a prime example. So what angle is your favorite? In all honesty, I prefer the front peg angle. I much prefer the view from the front peg looking back. That's my opinion. What's your opinion? So yeah, if you want to try that out, give it a try. If you're not sort of brave enough, leave it alone. Someone did mention in my last video, will GoPro session work? Yeah, GoPro session will work even better. It's smaller, more compact, be more out of the way. So yeah, a basket peg GoPro mount. How to? So tell me what you think about the angles. Do you like them? Do you want to see more of them? I'm thinking about doing some sort of big handrails and stuff with it. Might have to sort of put the uh, GoPro in more of a, like a secure housing. My sort of uh, GoPro tripods and mounts and stuff, really cheap and simple. I pay literally 15 quid on eBay. Five quid for the little mount that goes on the pegs and the top of the forks. I paid five quid for the chest mount. And I paid five quid for this. Yeah, five quid on eBay. It's like a little knuckle duster. Put your hands through it like you would. I don't actually own a knuckle duster, a real one. And you just film stuff. And you can keep it really, really steady. It's really good for like cycling along, filming people doing lines and stuff. And it just sticks in your pocket. So when I go over a mountain biking, I stick that little handle in my pocket. GoPro can go on the actual mount on top of the stem or on the helmet or on the chest. And I'm sort of good to go. So thanks for watching this one, and bye for now.